Good day, fellow learners. Welcome to our discussion of case number 39. And before we start, may I ask your kind-hearted spirits to join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NPEX RN application in review to 500 nurses. And to help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. Share this video to at least 10 of your friends and we will pray for your success. Thank you so much. So before we proceed, we'd like to congratulate Sir Luisito Manaxa, USRN from the University of Perpetual Health System, Laguna, for passing the New York State Board of Nursing NCLEX exam last March 24, 2025. And let's learn from his success recipe. I would like to thank Ray Igapas Review System, Sir Ray, Mom Joanne, Sir Efren, Mom Selena, Sir George, and all the staff for the assistance and helping me to refresh my nursing concepts and able to pass my NCLEX exams. After more than two decades of being in hiatus as nurse practitioner, attending two quick fix sessions and one boot camp held in Baguio helped me a lot and it was very unforgettable experience because it boosted and motivated me more to take the exams again. Maraming salamat po. Okay, so on to case number 39. And this time around, we're going to talk about nitroglycerin toxicity. Okay, before anything else, let's begin with our functional concepts. Remember, a functional concept could be a word, a sentence, a phrase, or even an entire paragraph that gives you a sense of direction on how you deconstruct a specific question. So the first functional concept that we have here is about nitroglycerin and its vasodilatory effects. And that makes it the drug of choice, meaning it's indicated for clients with angina pectoris. Um, like for example, if patients have Prince Metals angina, meaning they're having chest pain even at rest. So, your nitroglycerin could help by relieving and preventing the chest pain that comes with acute angina attacks. Now, usually it's given sublingually. And it's very important for us to note how we store nitroglycerin. It has to be in an amber or darkened container. And it has to be sealed tightly. It's just usually opened as necessary. Usually, um, if it's consumed once a week, it's opened once a week, it can be stored in the body of the ref with uh, average temperature of 25 degrees centigrade. And the most important thing is make sure that it is not exposed to very bright lights because it decreases the potency of the drug. Now, it's also indicated to reduce myocardial oxygen demand in clients with acute myocardial infarction. So in essence, it improves the blood flow in the muscles of the heart. It's also indicated in clients with heart failure um, because of its vasodilatory effect, it reduces both preload and afterload. Okay, so which means the resistance against the blood that enters the blood vessels are both reduced or decreased. So in essence, it eases the workload of the heart. It's also given as intravenous treatment in a client with hypertensive emergency and for clients with hypertension and pulmonary edema. Now, it's important to note that before we give nitroglycerin, especially in elderly clients, we need to assess the client if that client is taking uh, drugs for erectile dysfunction like Viagra. Why? Because these drugs would cause hypotension. Nitroglycerin will also cause hypotension. If we combine two drugs that both would cause hypertension, then that leads to fatal hypotension. So it's very important that we need to assess for our elderly clients, if male clients specifically, if they are taking Viagra. Okay, so... How do we know that there is nitroglycerin toxicity? Now remember, shift BNDM. These are the acrostics for the signs and symptoms of nitroglycerin toxicity. First and foremost, because of its vasodilatory effect, there's going to be severe decrease in blood pressure, and that comes with headache. Usually, it's the headache that's 
an early symptom. And then tachycardia may result. So the client will complain of um, increased heart rate and flushing. So if you see severe hypotension, headache, and flushing, check on which medication could the patient be taking. And then the patient may have blurred vision, nausea, and vomiting, dizziness or syncope, and you have your met hemoglobinemia. It's rare, however, it may occur, and it's a serious complication of nitroglycerin intake that's related to accumulation of the drug in the system, meaning there's going to be high dose of nitroglycerin. Now, your methaglobinemia is a blood disorder in which there's just too much methemoglobin. It is manifested by your chocolate brown colored blood and a low oxygen saturation. So what happens when you have an elevation of methemoglobin? So iron is usually oxidized to the ferric form. Now, the ferric form of iron can't combine with oxygen, which means your red blood cells can't deliver oxygen to the tissues effectively. So Ultimately, your methemoglobin could lead to decreased oxygen in the tissues because iron have been oxidized to the ferric form, which cannot bind with oxygen. So in methemoglobinemia, the treatment is the use of methylene blue that converts iron from its ferric form back into its ferrous form because the ferrous form of iron is the one that's capable of binding with oxygen. So management of nitroglycerin toxicity, remember slab, first stop nitroglycerin in any toxic reactions uh, related to drugs. You need to immediately stop administering the drug. And then because it could cause hypotension, you have to position the client flat then administer IV fluids to correct hypotension, and then vasopressors in order to maintain the blood pressure of the client. So you'll have to administer a vasopressor drug like dopamine. So once again, when there is methemoglobinemia, the treatment for nitroglycerin toxicity will include the administration of methylene blue. Now, just to highlight this, never combine nitroglycerin with your phosphodiesterase inhibitors like your sildenafil or Viagra, Tadalafil or Cialis, and Vardenafil. Remember the fill, fill, fill drugs, sildenafil, Tadalafil, Vardenafil. Why? These drugs will also decrease the blood pressure. And we all know for a fact, as we have stated early on, that nitroglycerin causes hypertension. So if you combine this set of drugs together with nitroglycerin, the resulting decrease in blood pressure can become fatal. So I have here um, the nitroglycerin drug compatibility cheat sheet, which you may want to go over slowly. Okay, so you have here the sets of a set of drugs that can be safely co-administered with nitroglycerin and some drugs that should not be co-administered with nitroglycerin. Let me just highlight certain things here. Like for example, tricyclic antidepressants like amitriptyline, it may also worsen hypotension because amitriptyline can cause your orthostatic hypotension associated with anticholinergic side effects. Now, you also focus on alcohol because alcohol relaxes the blood vessel, so it could also worsen hypotension. The rest, like for example, diuretics like furosemide, uh, your statins like atorvastatin, morphine, beta blockers and calcium channel blockers, including antihypertensive agents like ACE inhibitors, this can be safely co-administered with your nitroglycerin. Now, let me just highlight the interaction if, for example, your patient is taking nitroglycerin and furosemide, how would you know that the toxicity could be related to furosemide and not to nitroglycerin? Although in both conditions, for example, there could be resulting 
decrease in blood pressure. Your furosemide toxicity is manifested by your tinnitus ringing in the ears, muscle cramps and muscle weakness, and this muscle cramps and weakness could be associated with the decrease in potassium and decrease in calcium. Hence, you have weakness and cramps leading to, uh, sorry, resulting from hypokalemia and hypocalcemia. Now, just to compare aspirin toxicity from furosemide toxicity, both conditions, the patient may experience tinnitus. However, aspirin toxicity eventually leads to hyperventilation that can progress to respiratory alkalosis. And it comes with vertigo, fever, and nausea and vomiting. So pay particular attention to the fact that aspirin toxicity can lead to respiratory alkalosis associated with hyperventilation because aspirin toxicity can cause hyperpnea. Okay, so initially, there's going to be a resulting respiratory alkalosis, which in late stage could potentially convert to metabolic acidosis. Now, severe aspirin toxicity is manifested by, remember, sharp, seizures or coma, high fever, altered mental status, rapid breathing, cosmos respiration, like in clients with um, diabetic ketoacidosis and renal failure. Then the patient could also have pulmonary edema. And this is what I'm saying, in late stage aspirin toxicity, your alkalosis initially can convert to profound acidosis because of the resulting low bicarbonate levels. Now, just to compare atorvastatin toxicity from your nitroglycerin toxicity, furosemide toxicity, and aspirin toxicity. Remember, in atorvastatin, atorvastatin toxicity, you have the acrostic harm, meaning there's a resulting hepatotoxicity manifested by jaundice, elevated liver function test, abdominal symptoms like nausea, vomiting, which could also occur in the other forms of um, toxic drug reactions. Rhabdomyolysis. Um, what happens in rhabdomyolysis could be disinte disintegration of muscle fibers. This could result from uh, conditions in which there could be high environmental temperature. So rhabdomyolysis is common among firemen. And at the same time, rhabdomyolysis can be secondary to um, neuroleptic malignant syndrome in which there's muscle rigidity. And we know for a fact that neuroleptic malignant syndrome is associated with the treatment with antipsychotics. And then, of course, myopathy or myalgia. So muscle pain can result from atorvastatin toxicity. And then just to compare, metoprolol toxicity is manifested by cardiogenic shock, hypotension, heart block, first, second, or third degree. Now, in heart block, usually the most common sign would be bradycardia. And then in severe cases, you have asystole, bradycardia, and bronchospasm. So remember, those are the drugs that end in O-L-O-L, -O -L, OLOL. You remember about bronchospasm. So these drugs are not given in clients with asthma. At the same time, your metoprolol uh, may worsen heart block. So it's also not indicated for clients with heart block because of the resulting bradycardia. Okay, so before... We use the functional concepts we've learned. I just would like to share with you the good feedback we're getting from the users of my book, NCLEX RN311, The Next Generation Quick Fix. So it says here, parang actual. It's a, it looks like it's actual thing. Patok, I was like, Sir Ray, you know what topics would come out? I'm glad I'm a gapus baby. And it's amazing. Sincerely speaking, if it were not for NCLEX 311, I would not have passed. I went through it the last four days of my exam. That book is amazing. Keep up the good thing of helping as nurses. And then in Tagalog, somebody says it's legit. And click C1 pun the best. Halos same na same po siya sa pagkakakonstruct sa mga na-encounter ko pong mga standalone questions. Okay? And that's the reason why a 66-year-old, the world's oldest NCLEX RN passer, Madam Flor Villare, passed the test last December 2, 2024 because she used the book NCLEX 311. So let's use what we just learned to answer a case. So we have a 
two-year-old male with a history of coronary artery disease presented to the emergency department with complaints of severe headache. We have to take note of that. Dizziness and fainting episode shortly after taking the following medications. So the patient took aspirin. Oh, well, we don't have hyperpnea here. So it could not be related to the aspirin. Metoprolol, we don't have bronchospasm. Okay, atorvastatin, once again, in atorvastatin toxicity, the patient may have jaundice. We don't have it here. So that leaves us with furosemide or nitroglycerin. Now, pay particular attention to the fact that the client had fainting episodes. Now, on arrival, his blood pressure was critically low. So you have the syndrome there. You have low BP, severe headache, and dizziness. That increases the, our suspicion associated with um, nitroglycerin toxicity. Because in furosemide toxicity, you have to note for the presence of electrolyte imbalances like hypokalemia and hypocalcemia. And there wasn't any that was presented on the case. So the patient appeared confused and had difficulty breathing and displayed cyanosis of the lips despite being on high flow oxygen. So the nurse should prepare the client with the interventions associated with toxicity related to, once again, we have analyzed the relationship of these drugs to the symptoms presented by the client. And we can conclude therefore that the syndrome presented by the client at the emergency department, namely severe headache, dizziness, and of course, a critically low blood pressure that's associated with tachycardia and flush skin is associated with the answer for nitroglycerin toxicity. So I just hope the lesson we had today will help you navigate your NCLEX next generation. So remember, a functional concept a day helps wipe your NGN fears away. So with that, this is your mentor, your fact check, Badere Gapus, saying thank you for joining me in this discussion. See you next time on our next video.